Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will set up our actual database class for Room. And also we, what we will set up is a type converter for Room. But you will understand what that is when we actually do that. So let's start by going into our DB package, right click and create a new Kotlin class. I will call this article database, article database, select class of course and press enter. And this will be an abstract class. Database classes for room always need to be abstract. And we need to add an annotation for that class, which is add database to tell room that this is our database class. Then the first property, the first parameter of that database annotation will be our list of entities. We only have one single entity, so one single table in our database, which is the article table. So we need to pass that as an array and we simply pass article double colon class and import article here. And we should all also define a version for our database. I'll set it to one initially. The version is used to update our database later on. So let's say we want to make some changes at some point, then we need to update that version so that room knows that we made some updates to our database and that we should migrate our own old database to our new database. Then we need to let this class inherit from room database. And we can go inside of this class and here we need to create an instance of our article DAO, or at least not, not an instance, we need to create a function that returns an article DAO, an abstract function. I'll call it get article DAO and this returns an article DAO. And that is everything we need to do for this function. That is an abstract function, so we don't need to implement it. And the implementation of that will happen behind the scenes. Room will do that for us. Then I will create a companion object to be able to create our actual database. And first we want to create an instance of that article database. That will be a private var instance. And that is an instance of article database, which is nullable and we set it to null initially. We need to annotate that instance with add volatile. That means that other threads can immediately see when a thread changes this instance. So that is really useful. And we also want to create a log variable, private val log, which is just of type any. We will use that to synchronize setting that instance so that we really make sure that there's only a single instance of our database at once. But you will see what I mean with that when we write the next function, which is an operator function. And you need to call this invoke. That is called whenever we create an instance of our database. So whenever we um, write something like article database and call the constructor on that database, then also this invoke function will be called. So basically when we initialize or instantiate that object, and this function will take a context and we will set it to our instance. And if the instance is null, in that case, we want to start a synchronized block with our log object. So that means that everything that happens inside of this block of code here can't be accessed by other threads at the same time. So we really make sure that we don't set that there's not another thread that sets this instance to something while we already set it. And in this synchronous block, we want to return our instance again. So we make that null check again. And if it is still null, then we want to call a function that we create afterwards, which is create database, which will take our context. And we call dot also on that, which sets our current instance to it. And let's actually create that create, data, create database function here, which is a private function create database, which takes a context. And we will set it to room dot database builder. And in here, we need to pass the application context, we can get that from context dot application context. Then we need to refer to our database class. So to this current class, which is article database, double colon class dot Java. And we need to choose a name for our database, which I choose is article underscore db dot db. 
and don't forget to call dot build afterwards to actually create our database. And I know that this is very confusing for people who have never worked with Rune before. Everything that happens here is we create an instance of our database, which will be our singleton. So we will only have a single instance of that database. And in our invoke function here, whenever we create that instance of that article database class, then we return the current instance. And if it is null, we will set that instance in the synchronized block. And we check again if it is not null. But if it is null, we call our create database function and also set our instance to the result of our create database function. And this database class will then be used, or that instance of that database class will then be used to access our article DAO, which is used to access our actual database functions. And the last thing that we need to do to get our database running is what I already spoiled out a little bit in the beginning. We need to add a type converter to our database. So if we take a look in our article class, then you can see that we have integer, string, string, and so on. And here we have a source that is our very own source class that you can see here that only consists of an ID and a name that will be the source of a specific article. So basically from which publisher that article came. And the problem now is that Room can only handle primitive data types and strings. So very basic data types, but not our custom own classes. And we need to create what is called a type converter to tell Room how it should interpret that source class and to convert that source class into a string, for example. And on the other hand, if we have a string, we need to tell Room how it should create that source class out of that string. And for that, we create that type converter class. Let's go to our DB package, create a new Kotlin class, and I will con I'll call it converters. Make sure to select class. And that will be a very simple class. We have a function to define what happens if we want to convert to a string from a source. So we call it from source and pass source as a parameter. That will be the source that we will convert to a string. So that needs to return a string here. And to tell Room that this is a converter function, we need to annotate that as type converter. And in this example, I really only care about the name of that source. We don't want to know about that ID. That's not really important for us. So I will just return the name of our source here. So whenever we get the source, then we tell Room that it should convert that source to a string by just taking this, the name of the source. And then we will have another function, which is also a type converter which will be a function to source. So whenever we have a string, then we want to convert that string to our source class. And that will just return a new source and just pass our name twice. That is fine for our needs here. And that is really everything we need to do for this class. The very last thing we need to do is to actually tell our database that we want to add these type converters to that. So let's go to our database class, article database. And above that um, class creation, we simply want to add an annotation, add type converters. And in the parentheses, we want to pass the class of our converters. So converters double colon class. And by the way, let's also create a new package for our models. So they are not in our root package. That is not a really good package structure. So I create a new package, call it models. And then I will move all of our models in there. So article, news, response, and source. And that is it for this video. We finally set up our whole room database. If this was helpful for you to understand all this, then please let me know in the comments. And also if there's anything I can improve on, please let me know that too. That would be really helpful for me. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.